Dai here. Just a quick video today on how I made a recent photograph album. I've cut the chipboard covers out and I'm going around the edges with a black paint dabber. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to cover the pages completely or just front and back. But, so I did the paint dabbing um, while I made my mind up. These are the pages. I cut them out of basil cardstock, a nice heavy weight. It was called taffy, I think. And I simply got that size by cutting the pages in half. Here's a logo. My son copied this from one of the photos. It was very tiny, um, just to give us an idea of what the, the logo looked like. And my husband racked his brains to try and remember. He was just a very small child at the time. What the logo colours were, that sort of thing. And I just did the best I could with the little information I had and also the very short time frame that I had um, to get this prepared. I've got the words assembled there in a, a, a sort of type of banner and I just need to attach a add a, add a map of Tasmania. I printed a couple out and fussy cut one out. Um, a more stylized version would have been easier but this did the job. I took a bit of geographical license with the map and unfortunately cut off all the gorgeous offshore islands. Um, but it did the job. When I laid it on the red oval, however, I understood that it was not long enough. It was just too short. It was a fairly thick banner and I couldn't make that any smaller because of the size of the, the letters. So I simply chopped it in half and accentuated the parochial divide between north and south in the state by making it real. I went on and adhered all those together. Off, off camera. Now I'm just going to cover the front and back covers and I've cut out a couple of pieces of nice heavyweight black cardstock and I'm using Helmar 450 glue which I find is absolutely brilliant. It doesn't warp. Um, it adheres very very well. It's my favourite glue for this type of work. It's The lack of warping is, is brilliant. Several things I've made recently using other glues and PVAs and things just seem to depend on the paper of course but um, they can warp. Here I'm giving it a good roll with my brayer to make sure that the um, surface contact is as good as it can be. And here I'm just bending up the sides. You need to start to make the paper realise that it's got to behave itself and bend where you want it to. And you can use your bone folder and also by pressing it. You'll see me do that quite a bit. You cut away that big chunk of unwanted paper from the corner, leaving just about a sixteenth of an inch right on the very point where the chipboard meets the paper. Um, that helps to cover it. If you cut too close to the chipboard at that point, you, especially if you haven't painted it, when you wrap the cover, you can be left with a, a point of chipboard showing. And it's important if you want a very neat finish to try and be careful there. Here I'm laying down the double-sided sticky, a nice uh, substantial tape. Good and strong. I put one layer there on the edge of the chipboard right against the edge and the other one is right against the edge of the cardstock and that double layer gives plenty of adhesion. Give it a rub with the bone folder. That helps again with the contact. Make sure that it's as secure as possible. Like a lot of things with paper crafting, the attention you pay to these sorts of details shows in the final product. Take your time and don't try and rush it. It's easier to do it well the first time and have to redo something or get it finished quickly and never quite be satisfied. Well, that's how I feel. If it's not as I want it, 
I'm never really satisfied. There you can see I'm just pressing in those little points where we left it a sixteenth of an inch or so overhanging. You press that in with your bone folder or your fingernail or something, your thumbnail, um, to tuck it into the inside of the, the uh, chipboard and it gives you a lovely finish. Put three pieces of tape on this long flap at the end. I could have cut it a bit shorter, but they were the size they were, so I left it as it was. Removing the backing paper from the tape and just tucking in any stray bits of adhesive that might be hanging over. It's far easier to do it before you adhere things down than try and get rid of it once you've uh, once you've finished. If it's still sticking out over the edge. There we go. That's the last flap adhered, just trimming off a tiny little divot on that back section of the flap. I have got a, a very useful little yellow tool that helps with those and I, I simply didn't get it out. I usually do because I, I like it to be precise. That's why I've got a little divot left over. I didn't actually trim it as accurately as I should have. Well, that's the covers covered. The second one's always a lot faster than the first, don't you find? Now we have to line the inside, and I chose red cardstock for this, as red was the other predominant colour uh, that my husband remembered. Just measuring it up making sure it's exact. It uh, overlaps by about an eighth of an inch or between an eighth and a sixteenth of an inch all round except on the left hand side which is the binding side. Again it just butts up against the end. It doesn't need to because there's no wrapping on that side. There's no need to leave a gap although it is painted so it wouldn't matter. But Adhering those with Scotch Quick Dry Glue, making sure it's right, as right as it can be, and again brayering it to get that good contact and adhesion, especially around the the edges. And here's the bind it all. Now I don't film where I do the binding. It's uh, I don't do it enough to um, think I can do a, a competent video on it. And also there are, if you've got one, you know how to use it. You don't need me to show you how I do it. It's done exactly the same way for everybody. And if you haven't got one, there are some brilliant videos out there. So go and have a look. Um, better than anything I can produce. Here we have the punched, there's the covers all punched and the pages all punched. You just follow the instructions in the book and you get it exactly right every time. It's brilliant. Before you put it together, before you, before I put the OYs on, anything like that, I wanted to get the photographs in, so I've done that. There's just one more page to do. I'll show you that here. Using the Scotch Quick Dry Glue again, it's good for photographs. Not that it really mattered in this case because this was just a memento mori to take along. It was not for display. It was not. It's not meant to be a permanent um, device. It was just an aid memoir for all those chaps who were present, for whom buses were an important part of the time they spent together. I did go in afterwards um, with Tim's assistance and write on my computer quite a bit of information about each bus, the information that Tim had, what the bus number was, what the fleet number was, where the photo was taken, the type of bus, that sort of, any of those technical details that Tim had. 
just on a little strip of paper that I had hid below each photograph. And that just finished off the album, put the information available for anyone looking through it. It turned out a nice, robust, compact little album. There's front, front and back covers, blank pages, putting the front cover on and the back cover goes on the top of the front cover upside down so that when you've put the binding on, the wires on, it opens with the winding, the binding connections in, inside the back of the book and out of sight. There's just a few of the flip-throughs. That's the old photo of the bus that had the logo on the side that we used for the front of the album. It was called a side loader and had, instead of having just one door at the front, it just opened up, doors opened up all along the side. It was a very old bus many years ago. Only a bus person would love an album like this, but it served its purpose and was well received. That was my favourite photo, a burnt out bus on bonnet, um, I'm not sure where now. It burnt completely to the ground, it surprised me that anything so big and metallic could completely be destroyed like that. No one was injured, all was well, but it did cause a little bit of excitement at the time. Well, that's it for this little sort of bound photo album. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Bye now.